Hey family, welcome to Cool Jazz Conversations. My name is Marcella Shepard, the bass man. And the group book says, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mm -hmm. Please welcome to the Cool Jazz Conversations, three-time Grammy-nominated husband and wife duo, Marcus and Jean Baylor, known as the Baylor Project. Family, how you doing? Hey, 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 we are good. We yes. are good. We look, we're still married. Hey, there he amen. Is. Celebrating what 20 years, right? Almost. Wow, I think funny. 19, coming up on 20. To see, we done Carry, lost count. Carry the two. 2002. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Wow, we're yeah, coming up right, on yeah. Right, you got some planning to do. That's right. We got to do something big, don't, don't we? Don't fuck. Yeah, we got a gig. We got a gig on one of our dates. <laughs> <laughs> Do not fumble this, or fumble. or you will find yourself sitting on the bench. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's the right. Bench you want to be sitting on, bro. But yeah, but congratulations. That's that's no small feat. Uh, my wife and I we just celebrated our twenty fourth anniversary. Wow! Congratulations! Twenty four yeah. years. She she has not Good left me yet, so y'all y'all continue Aww. to pray for her. <laughs> pray, for her. pray for her for all keep that her. I put her through. Keep but yeah, but yeah, keep keep holding each other's hands. But yeah, but twenty yeah. years, man, that's that's definitely a, a long time. Uh, especially being that the two of you are in this this musical journey, but let's let's go back if you uh, will. I mean, you guys uh, are kind of from opposite sides of the spectrum. You know, Mark is living uh, in the jazz world initially, or from day one, pretty much in the church, and then Gene, you in the R&B and soul world with Jeanne, whom I love. Oh, so much, but you know, Thank you. you think about it. I mean, Jersey and Missouri, they they don't necessarily <laughs> mix, you know, a little I far mean, apart, <laughs> different worlds. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, how did that come to be? Man, she saw me, man, and just couldn't get enough of me, man. It was just <laughs> like, I have to, I got to have him. That's oh literally, that's what happened. Are, are we playing two troops in a lie now? Is that what we're mm -hmm. doing? <laughs> we're going to start off with the lie. <laughs> you know, what's your that's, side of the story? That's your story. Gene? How it you... was, which Gene's still outside of it. Right. And right. the truth is, um, we met through music, actually. I was um, uh, participating in a showcase for ASCAP back in the day, mm. and um, I needed a drummer. So he always complains that he was not my first call because I didn't know him. So I didn't have, I was like, I don't know who to get. And I, I uh, reached out to one person and he was kind of flaky. And a mutual friend of ours, Orrin Evans, he's a piano player. Oh, he yeah. was playing, he was on the gig. And he's like, man, you need to reach out to Marcus Dale. I'm like, who is that? He's, he's, he plays with Yellow Jacks. I'm like, really? And um, I hit him up and he was like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. Now he, the funny thing is he almost canceled. Mm. He almost canceled. But aren't we glad he didn't? Because mm. my God, what a blessing came to him on the yeah, for you. <laughs> what a blessing for you. <laughs> it's a two-way blessing. <laughs> and so what you, you guys you, you did a couple of gigs together and and then Marcus, you you kind of pursued no. from there. Man, she gig? had to have me after one gig. Man. Oh my god. Just one oh my gig. god. Can somebody mute his mic? <laughs> One she had gig. To have me. Can you believe that? One she, gig. She liked the way you crash your symbols. Dirty. <laughs> Gong. Deaf in one ear. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Ow. And she's been walking to your beat ever since, man. <laughs> yep. Uh, there it is. I yeah. can't. I can't. The drama but funny. of we it got, all. But our upbringings are similar. I mean, her dad was. Um, was a pastor as well, growing up in the church, a uh, Baptist pastor where they got out of the church in what, about two hours? Oh, wow. See, yeah. Got, got well, that, yeah, but that was including, I think, uh, no, 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 yeah, nine, service start, nine, 30, no, 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 yeah, 11 to one, church service, 11 to one, that's right, that was after Bible study or Bible class or whatever. But I grew up Pentecostal apostolic, so we you didn't ain't get out never church. get out. That's, that's all day long. That's an important <laughs> church, church is Sunday. Not what yeah, I there it is. Church you is got that right. Sunday. 
He's still in the service of the Lord. Church is Sunday. That's the best way to say it. What is church? Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> All, All day. day. <laughs> All day. Wow. <laughs> and so, you know, when, when the two of you came together, you know, I know for my wife and I, I grew up, so I was baptized Catholic as a child. Okay. But I was really only baptized Catholic because my parents wanted me to go to this Catholic school. They mm. didn't go to church, right? And yeah. so after I went, after I was pulled from um, Catholic school and went to public school, they, you know, they were done with church pretty much. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to a Baptist church for a few years because a buddy of mine went, loved it, joined yeah. the choir, started singing. And then my parents started going to an AME church. Nice. And so my mother's like, well, no, boo, you need to come on. I can't believe I just said boo. No, nobody know my mother. <laughs> to this day, right. she boo. still calls me boo. boo just early. Base man boo. Yes. That's right. <laughs> so uh, anyway, she's like, you know, I want all of us to be together at the same church. So then I go to the same church, which turns out I loved it even more mm -hmm. uh, as I came into my own and, and learning more about God. And then I met my wife, who's born and raised Catholic. Oh. Uh, in DC, this this big black Catholic church. And so she and I would switch back and forth from Sunday to Sunday, one week at my church, one week at her church. Mm. And then I finally had to make the decision, which then became easier for me because I started going to Sunday school a little bit more at her church. And I felt that my growth was happening more there. So I then converted over to Catholicism. But how did that transformation go for the two of you? Wow. Mm. Would you wow. know, That's interesting. That is quite a story. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and a great it question. Is. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. We, um, I grew up Baptist in the voice, what you already said, we grew up Pentecostal, Epstock. And um, it was an interesting process because uh, right before leading up to me meeting Marcus, uh, God was kind of dealing with me in a way where sometimes you don't realize it until later on. Um, but I had kind of, you know, when I left high school and went to college, I honestly was not thinking about the Lord. I was like, all right, pause. It's been real. I'm mm -hmm. about to go and have me some So much. I wonder, are you thinking about him now? But go ahead. You know Continue. what? You know, again, mute. Hey, man. <laughs> Did you get that mute? <laughs> Don't get me started on you, oh, big bro. <laughs> your husband. Right. So, um, I was just kind of like developing a, a real, um, a different, deeper desire for a connection with God, uh, deeper than what I'd had kind of growing up. Um, because it's one thing to grow up in church. It's another thing to really start developing a relationship, your own personal relationship with God. And I think that's what I was kind of wanting. Um, and to make a long story short, I just... Um, you know, I met Marcus around that time and he had put a book in my hands that was like book of the month at his church. It was called God Chaser by Tommy Tenney. Mm -hmm. And it was a powerful, powerful, it still is a very powerful book. Um, and it really kind of focused on the presence of God and experiencing that. And um, it, it, de it developed a, a stronger desire, like to really, have those type of uh, encounters with God. And um, I ended up uh, going out to meet his family uh, in St. Louis. And I had a wonderful uh, spiritual experience, um, which I guess you call New Testament experience or whatever. But um, I got filled with the Holy Spirit with it. I was speaking in tongues. And it was like that kind of um, space where I rededicated my life back to the Lord. And um, just was in a, now in a, a space where I was starting that process of learning uh, to have a relationship with God and live normal life, you know, and um, and that process continues on to this day. So it really wasn't a difficult process. It was just something that was kind of, um, I think, a natural process. And it was, and I was around the time, I think about a year before that or so, Marcus had kind of rededicated his uh life to to god as well because he, he you know he was living a, a hot raggly mess 
Okay. Himself, oh, amen. Oh, I don't okay. want to. I don't want to tell somebody else's okay. testimony, amen. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> we're not. We're not here to out the amen. Man of God, amen. The, the truth and, shall and, set you free. You know, and we're not here to be trying to be calling out skeletons and people closet and all that. Listen, okay, tell her, amen. Tell her, I'm Sometimes not what I up. used to be. Come, come uh, on, somebody. Uh, come on. I'm yeah. not what I what. Say yeah, that again. I'm not what I want to be, but I'm not what yeah. I used to, <laughs> used to be. Come on, somebody. Mm. Mm. Let them, them bones, don't we? you want them bones to live? Yeah, you don't get head to head with none of them bones. But you know, Gene, as you see hey. me talking about <laughs> your experience, it it flashed me back to um, early college, just before I met my wife. I, I met my wife at Morgan State, uh, but I was at Florida Memorial down in Miami. It's the, the southernmost HBCU uh, on the East Coast. And I was dating uh, this young lady. She was a couple of years older than me, actually. She went into the military first. And she was Pentecostal. And oh, she wow. took me to church with her one Sunday. <laughs> and it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> don't do that. Because, and I, I say bejesus because I wanted to say something else, but you know, we're in the other way, so. <laughs> the context yeah, of on. this conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But listen, so we're, we're in church service have been going on for a while because, you know, it's oh. Sunday service. And the yeah, Bible Sunday. Church, oh, yes. I so already know where this is going. So we're sitting there and the pastor, he stands up and he's like, it's time for the anointing, right? And everybody kind of stands up. I'm still sitting down. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, get up, boy, get up. I'm like, what? And so people start walking up. And she kind of nudges me to go out too. And I'm like, no, I ain't going up there. She's what? like, no, come on. It's okay. Go, go up there and receive your blessing. <gasps> what? And I'm going up and I'm seeing people passing out and, and acting crazy. Cause I'd never seen anything like this before in my life. I get to the front of that line. He's at the front. That mm. pastor, I, it was some some type of oil. I don't know if it was castor oil or <laughs> olive oil. Or, he took that oh, up school. and he put it on my head. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was a outer body experience, but I start screaming, hollering, speaking in tongues, and it scared wow. the Jesus out of me. I said, I ain't never going back there. <laughs> Y'all broke up immediately. <laughs> right. Oh, that was it. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> like, it's too much. It was, it was too much. I, I wasn't ready. Right. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to receive it. I wasn't ready for what it meant, what it was offering. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But, but it let me know. What I learned from that moment was that the Holy Spirit is present mm, in yeah. my life. Right. Yeah. But, but the way it was revealed. Whoo, yeah. Wow. And, and, and the way it was revealed and just, I think. No understanding. Yeah, no right. understanding. Right. Yeah, like no understanding. It's just, yeah, that could be a shocker. Because yeah. I, I do believe that understanding, and I'm glad you had that experience in terms of just knowing that it's real, but at the same time, it's important to get understanding. Yes, mm. yeah, because I, I couldn't I couldn't receive it. And so yeah, it, it scared the hell out of me. And I was like, I ain't never going back. <laughs> you got to understand what he said, Gene. Turn to your neighbor and say, it scared the <laughs> hell out of him. You got the, the whatever was in his life, he said, I ain't doing that no more. My God, come on, somebody. Okay, I forgot. We were uh, oh, Lord. Oh, we're supposed to be God. talking about jazz music and generations. Listen, I mean, this right. this is life. This and this is life. To and you know what I love about the two of you and folks, you have got to follow them on social media. You know, God is present in everything they do, and it won't take anything for Marcus to break out mid sentence and start doing a Holy, a Holy Ghost dance, two-stepping, <laughs> oh, screaming, God. praising while he's lifting weights, while he's trimming the yard, while he's cooking. I mean, this this brother is anointed from head to toe, man. And it's, I, I think it's beautiful the way that you all celebrate the, the presence yeah. of the Lord in your life. He is ridiculous. You know what? You gotta, my thing is this. Oh, like my funny. mom think I play, I play too much. Mm -hmm. but it's like, mom, you raised me in church every day, all night. So I saw everything. So I get humor in everything. And hey, 
I believe God is a God of laughter too. So we got to have a good time. It, it ain't, you know, for me, I'm not always that like that serious. So it's just, you know, man, it's, we, we, well, you, you got the two step down, bro. You, you got it. <laughs> you, you got it. I, don't, I don't want you to do it right now. <laughs> the microphones are ready for it, but yeah, you, you, you definitely got a, a mean two step for sure. <laughs> so let's let's uh, switch gears, if you will. You know, just talking about um, some of your inspirations coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Marcus, we already mentioned that you came up in the church and Jane, not to say that you were a heathen or anything, but, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, Marcus, you came up uh, in the church, but then I know when you were introduced to jazz, that one of the first groups that you heard was that of the yellow jacket. So how stoked were you when I don't even know how many years later it was that you ended up playing yeah. for that group. I mean, take me yeah. back to that that phone call, if you will. Oh man, you're talking about, so I got introduced to the Yellow Jackets around seventh or eighth grade. And I think I joined the band around the age of 24. Wow. Maybe 23, 24, something okay. like that. So like 10, 12 years yeah. later. Yeah, and before that, I was touring with Kenny Garrett, and prior to Kenny Garrett, I was in Cassandra Wilson's band. Mm -hmm. And so, man, you know, like Gene stated earlier, that um, that I ended up getting my life dedicated back to the Lord. And that particular year, it was spoken that I was going to be blessed after going up to the altar, and had a similar experience to what you talked about. But I wasn't, you know, why (laughs) would Gene say the hands got laid? But uh, but. I knew what was going on. Amen. Amen. It and so I just knew from that day, um, you know, there was a transformation that taken place in my life. And man, what's crazy is like within like, I don't know if it's a month later or something like that. I was fasting along with the, my family's church at home in St. Louis. And I received a phone call out there clear blue uh, wow. to make some gigs. And all the band members gave me a phone call and management and asked me to make some gigs. And that's how the relationship and the first day of a uh, 10 year, a 10 year wow. relationship started with the guys. And just, it's amazing. Like we're talking about all these things, but it all really ties in into our album because this album is called Generations. Mm-hmm. Of course, Generations has to deal with all of our experiences growing up, church, family, uh, me being a part of the Yellow Jackets, Gene being a part of Jeanne, and all these things are uh pivotal moments in our lives in our lives that just that are really just life-changing and just moments man which are you know uh are unbelievable moments which are are beautiful most definitely and you know since you're very eager to talk about generations that's gonna you know build up no 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 no. we do that later on no you stay right no you stay you can stay right here amen but you know the man (laughs) the guy gotta put the text where it gotta be but we're gonna stay right here (laughs) Most definitely. Stick to the text. All good. But yeah, but you know, since you brought up Jeanne, you know, Gene, let's let's talk about Jeanne for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was one of y'all's biggest fans. I'm just gonna say, uh, you know, uh, Rubber <laughs> may or may not have had a poster. <laughs> may or Wait. may not. I'm, I don't think I ever got a poster. I'm just saying, you know, but you know, from Hey Mr. DJ to, but I'm, so I'm not just one of them cats that love all the hits, you know, I'm, I'm B-side all day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, more than just a temporary thing, rendezvous for the longest time. I mean, come yes. On. Yes. Uh, it's a temporary thing. I was going through some things. Lord have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. So yeah, so that music got me through. I was I was a huge Jeanne fan. Thank I was you. like, well, when are they going to do another album? And huh? They split. What? <laughs> you said, what? <laughs> Who said, uh, wait? Did they go to church together? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a gospel album? But you know, sh- share with us what your experience with Renee, what what that did for you, and preparing you for where you are now on your musical journey. Yes, you know, we met at Temple University in Philadelphia, and um, <laughs> it's kind of started singing the talent shows and different things uh, at school, and we would make like big money. And when I say big money for college, that was like fifty dollars. So you had yeah. fifty dollars, you was like. Oh, we're going to 
eat good this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of how we started doing music together. And um, <clears throat> when we, that's actually how we made our segue into the industry because someone had heard us and took us up to New York to sing for some record labels and uh, one with Flavor Unit, that's the one that stuck. Mm-hmm. So um, with KG and he was looking for a girl group at the time. So it was just the timing and everything really worked out. Um, <clears throat> but it was such a learning experience, huge learning experience, um, because that's your first uh, experience with the music industry. Now this is going back to 92, 93 at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, where Hamish the DJ premiered on the radio in the summer of 93. That was right after our, our last year in school. So that was super cool too. Um, <clears throat> but that was like, um, we were kind of laying the groundwork uh, without really knowing it. You know, it's when you're young and you're just kind of going with the flow, you're just doing things. And you, right. you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So, you know, now looking back over it, it's like, wow, we had some really great experiences getting to not only record, um, but also perform live um, <clears throat> to tour and to travel to different countries. Um, and, you know, experiencing the major label process during that time. Um, was huge learning experience and so even just like writing and getting an opportunity to write or try to write and sometimes it'll work out well sometimes it may not work out well um you know i found that i kind of needed to grow in that area so it was great even getting a chance to work with different producers and um i was like a ballad writer and then on the piano so it's like okay you know, how do you write the tracks? How do you write the up-tempo songs and that sort of thing? And so we really fed off each other a lot. And then also, you know, the people that we were around, like KG and Naughty by Nature, we were around them a lot. And they were always just perfect gentlemen. (laughs) If you can imagine, they were kind of like us, big brothers in a way, you know? So they took really good care of us in that way. Um, and, um, And in many ways, it just kind of laid the foundation for um future experiences with music and writing and just get this this foundation of knowledge and information and even now when we're going to do whether it's photo shoots or uh, video shoots or recording and everything like that you always carry all of your experiences with you we're like the sum total of our experiences and so that's like a very impactful experience um that we both had at a at a young age, but young adult, we were we were grown, but we weren't quite grown. Right, right. <laughs> we thought we were grown, but now that I'm really grown, it's like you wasn't grown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's so many things that, and you just learn so much in the way because there's so many things that unexpected things that you you don't know about, and so you kind of gotta learn it the hard way. And there was, you know, there was really not anybody to kind of <clears throat> take you by the hand and say, hey good if you do this or it's good if you do that or watch out for this or watch out for that you know so you just you're learning on the spot um but all in all it was a it was a really impactful and positive experience that you know will always uh be like the foundation of my time in this industry well thank you all for so much good music man and you know you. I, I always loved it there were always undertones of jazz present yeah. in the music so i i knew then that you would eventually make the turn or transition, mm. if you will, um, yeah. to, to that of uh, a jazz vocalist. Marcus, would you agree? Um, I can't say I don't agree. I'll say this. I knew he didn't listen to the coming up. He didn't listen to the B side, right? I didn't he didn't listen to the B side. So I knew the hits. I knew the hits of John A. Uh, so I really appreciated John A, to be honest with you, really after we uh met and got married once I started really digging into the music and just realizing that, man, like they were really trailblazers. Wait a minute, so you married this woman without listening to her catalog? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, again, what had happened was, <laughs> again, she fell in love with me at first sight. Ah, uh, so you felt you didn't just, need just to. Lies. So, yeah. so I had to go back and grab the catalog. She I'm gonna, was, I'm gonna tell you that story Jane too. Jane listened to the whole Traveling Miles album. <laughs> she <laughs> came to the, and before I met her, she came to the tour with somebody else. Oh. But I, but I didn't know her then. I'm just saying. 
Not that, that is true. No skeletons and we, all that. We, 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 we can, that ain't no skeletons. Matter of fact, I saw you at St. Lucia Jazz Festival too. We didn't know you though. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, you were. I think you were, yeah, yeah, yep, you were there. We figured it out later on. I didn't know you, so. Matter of fact, I think you were there with your ex-girlfriend. Ooh. Boom. But I uh, didn't know you was at the uh, St. Lucia show, uh, though. Why am uh, I finding that out for the first time? No, I told you that. I told you no, that. I don't know how no. you don't remember. You always remember the thing. Ladies I'll give you I'll if you were I'll just give you tuning in, this is going down memory lane. Our <laughs> special guests today are Marcus and Jane Baylor, the Baylor Project. <laughs> <laughs> and the man with the voice, yes, who is sir. our uh, therapist. Yes, I'm the man therapist. With, with the hour. Yes, yeah, sit, sit on down on my couch, you know. And right. speaking of sitting, <laughs> sit on down on the couch, I mean, how cool was it that, you know, out of the pandemic, the song is birthed, a challenge is birthed. And I would think that, you know, when you guys wrote it initially, it was kind of like a, a joke per se. Is exactly what it was. That was, <laughs> that was just loudness. And then the song ends up being Grammy nominated. Who who does that? <laughs> yes. You talk about a great punchline. <laughs> talk about a great punchline. I mean, that's Man. one hell of a joke. You get Grammy nominated from it, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. He was in the living room talking on the phone to somebody, probably one of his brothers or something. He was fussing because it was in that. It was early on in the pandemic where. A lot of people were just not kind of getting the memo that this yeah. is actually serious. Mm -hmm. And they were just out and about like it's normal. When he's fussing, I don't understand what y'all do. Why can't they just sit out? People just need to sit out there. And so I'm in the kitchen cooking. I'm just like, why don't you go and sit? I was like, oh. And I'm, songs just kind of come like that. Everything is a song, right? And uh, I went to the keyboard and I'm just working. And I'm like, hey, man. Let's go live. Let's do something fun. And he's just like, what do you want? <laughs> and I'm um, just, come on, let's go live. And so I'm like, we'll just do live on, on Instagram, whatever. He was like, well, no, because he's real extra. He gets that Teddy Riley syndrome where he want to put up 55 cameras. <laughs> Every <and> one live. <laughs> yeah. on Facebook, Twitter, Black Planet, and Christian Mingle. All Every day. Time. Every Oh, we're going live, nigga. We're going live. We're going live, live. <laughs> and I'm glad he did those <laughs> because one of our uh, uh, friends on social media uh, was like, man, that's a cool song. Y'all should turn that to a challenge. You're like, you think? And then we did it for fun. And then what had people were like standing in, like, one of our friends did like that. They were doing this, like, Chicago style stepping yeah. they were like in their apartment because we were all at home on quarantine and one of our friends who's a musician he plays the organ uh with Gregory Porter Andre J Pavek he um he was quarantining at his parents home in I think Czech uh Czech Republic wow. and uh because they were on the road and had to cut the tour short and he sends back everybody else is sending back like a little fun little thing he sends back like whole arrangement a whole situation. Yeah. Well, we were like, well, dang, that sounds like a song. And he's like, well, if you want, we can finish it. Just do the bridge. Wow. And, and we did that. And we ended up um, like just co-producing it. We did had some some of our friends like uh, do like uh, instrumentation over the keyboard production, mm -hmm. everything. And it was so much. And Marcus wasn't even going to play drums. I'm like, well, that doesn't even make any sense. That's like. What are we talking about? You're going to play them drums, Cletus. Mm. Play the drums. Play the drums. He's working on Generations album. I ain't had time for all that. <laughs> right, right, right. Give me right. right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> and we did yes. it, and it just turned out to be a whole thing. And we're like, we got to do a photo shoot for our photographers in New York. And, uh, you know, we, we're still early on. We're like, well, I can't ha ask her to come down here and did it. So we did a little um, consultation with her and our friend who's a videographer. We're like, well, we're going to do it here. She's like, well, let me see. And you're going to, you want to use the natural light. Make sure you put more light here. Make sure that, so we were literally, they had two iPhones on these stands. Oh my and gosh. we're like, all right, put it on the 10 second timer because we can't get a photographer to come over in a pandemic. And we're oh like, all right, gosh. three, two, one. 
Wow. You know, I had a little thing with my stylist. Well, here's what I got. And I'll never have no clothes. So she's like, well, put that on with that. He can mix with and And that's, you know, we sat on our little ashy couch. Since then, we've gotten a new couch, but that was the sit on down story. It motivated you to <laughs> get some yeah. new <laughs> Like, this is our ugly couch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, an incredible story, though, but great way to turn around, uh, to turn, you know, the, the, the funkiness and down and out mood of the pandemic of folks quarantining uh, into something fun because there were so many people, I saw so many videos of folks participating in the challenge. So, so yeah, hats off to you all. How is it, you know, you guys are like a, a modern day uh, Max Roach and, and Abby Lincoln, if wow. you will, you know. Yes. Um, how is that work-life balance for you all, you know, uh, being that both of you are incredible artists in your own right, right? And you both have so much to bring to the table and there are only 24 hours in the day. And I know me with my extroverted energy, I'm trying to do something at least 23 hours of the day, you know, if you will. So how's the work-life balance for the two of you? There is none. No. Exactly. <laughs> um, Sit on down on my couch, brother. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Except, I mean, it's, you know what? I think, I think the reason why I was challenging to have a balance because it's like, of course, cre being creative, that's definitely a balance because we don't necessarily probably creative writing music all day. But the other side of it is, is that we run our own record label. Yeah. Uh, so that means everything fall upon us. Like right now, yeah, we're working on getting some things done. Um, you know, we tour together. Uh, we actually do have two separate hotel rooms where we tour them. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, he said, Praise God. You, Amen. You got to think about it. Like when Tuck and Yes. When you getting dressed and getting ready, that mirror oh is big enough for the both of us. Uh, what come you on, saying? somebody. Yes. Oh, he's, he's the deal. I love you. I love yes. I love my wife. Listen, if. <laughs> I ain't even right. gonna go there. Let's, okay, like, I can tell right now that you're sitting in your space at the crib. That's your space. This is my space. Your space. Yes. I can I can feel it. I can just yes. tell, like, that's your, when you get in your zone, you go right there. Exactly. You know, but but it's a blessing to, you know, to work with the person you love. Uh, that's the most important thing. Um, I think that really keeps us grounded and keeps us together. But I guess mostly... I mean, everything, everything is great. I mean, it just feels like, I guess the main thing is that just being able to, you know, we all, we share the same dreams and a lot of the same goals, but I think, I think the main thing is that we both, we work our lanes. That's mm. the thing. Like, right. When it comes to organizing photo shoots and all that, I just want to show up. Mm. Uh, when it comes to videos and all that, I just want to show up. So that's all her lane, you know, but then she does come over into my lane. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't have an ego what you at all. Are you saying but that Jane is a habitual line stepper? I, I just want to say this to you. So the, so earlier this week, right? So I said, we're working Thank on you. something, some music stuff. And I just said, you know what, babe, I think we should, uh, on this arrangement, we should put this right here. Now, mind you, you got to hear all that. Let me tell you something. Laugh and move on. She didn't want that on the record. Um, mm. She felt like the Bella Project was a dumb idea. So mm -hmm. I'm saying, I said, babe, now this ain't about ego or none of that. Now we're blessed to achieve this. But I said, babe, <laughs> after, uh, would, would you talk to somebody that's been Grammy, Grammy nominated, uh, you know, uh, uh, three plus times this way? And she said, what did you say to me, babe? He's like, you, 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 you forget, I'm nominated for Grams. I was like, so am I. He was like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the Baylor Project. Because he was I'm nominated a, with Yellow Jacket. So really, y'all had an argument over who had the most Grams. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, look here, y'all. That's the type of arguments we have in yeah, the Baylor yo, house. Yeah, Huh? Yeah, nothing. So let me tell y'all something. Nothing. That's the first time because we because it ain't about the Grammys and the awards and none of that, y'all. It really ain't for real. <laughs> Nick Rose is at home. <laughs> no, 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 he making notes. It's like mm -hmm. no, it ain't about none of that for real. <laughs> I was I was about to serve this up to y'all. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to eat something, some humble pie. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> I was just saying that like from day one, I'm always getting questioned. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, why do I always got to get questioned about something? You know, it's Cause just because we married, that's why. <laughs> I'm just like, and don't you forget it. Oh my mm. God. Mm. Really mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lewis, okay. You know, I mean, but and then let's let's move away from the Grammys. So I'll say this, whenever we get into an argument about sports, mm-hmm. so it has nothing to do with the awards. It has to deal with, I would say, the level of a thing. So check it out. We get into an argument about sports. And I say, I bet you I will take you out and that you can't beat me or nothing. She, you know what comes out of her mouth? Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Man, that came you, off wrong. That right, came off you, really you, wrong. Because I'm really trying to put this shanker. on. No, no. No, show what shank redemption going on in there. What's up? You know what she says to me? I love that movie. She look at me and be like, yo, I went to college on a division one scholarship. Oh. And so she always Ooh. throws that up at me. I mean, I will hey, say this. Yes, don't she be, has te- don't be testing Ooh, me. She flexes, it. She flexes but you got to know what sport she played. She was the first black lacrosse player, you know, but you from the Merlin area. So you might be able to identify i'm from st louis ferguson we know nothing about lacrosse oh it's a lot of lacrosse here yeah <laughs> but but so she went to college on a field hockey and then switched over to lacrosse in college wow. so i mean you know you got a few championship banners i always wanted to win one and play on a varsity basketball team so, so that's a whole other see, she has she has a good right hook she can swing real <laughs> yeah okay yeah. Marcel, let me tell you something yeah. mm-hmm. when we first got married this dude had a little nerf basketball right in the threshold from the hallway and when you come into the living room. And, mm-hmm. and I did let that happen. <clears throat> he put a little nerve joint. So sometimes we get bored and he'd be like, come on, you can't, you can't defend me. And so he, I went up there one time. Do you know he slammed me into the wall? Hold on, hold on, like, stop, 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 just something just a little light. No, she wants to embarrass you. So the embarrassment means no. that. Well, how can I say this? You got to go hard. She, she wants to dunk. Man. She wants to just dunk on you, like embarrass you, like Shaq. And it's just like, hold up. Ooh, we can't, she's we can't, throwing the body can't. into it and everything. Yeah, we can't have that. Like, you know. Hey, we was, we was at Eric Robeson's house about a month ago, though. Right. Yeah, that is oh, true. Man. Who Why could we got that on camera? Well, he got caught, right? Marcus, they was just shooting around and I wouldn't try to shoot around, but then I got inspired. Sure so he didn't know. He was he was just like, you know, not far from the 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 hoop, hoop. and I just I just ran. I was like, drop my bags. He went to shoot and I was like, boom. And then I took it back, See? dribbled it back, and I was like, oh. man, that joint was like this. She was all mad. It was in, like, in front of Eric, in front of See Eric. See what I'm saying? Yeah, because Gene, Gene is a, the kind of player Gene is. Gene like to like to mess with your pride. No, I don't. Wow. Yeah, because it's like, think about it. You wow. shoot that you somebody blocking no, a I shot. Don't. First of all, it's an embarrassment <laughs> kind of block. It's like <laughs> in, in front of people. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, like your, your says, shot really got blocked. Wow. Yeah. I came up from behind and you didn't know I was playing. So right. I, hope, that's I, the, that's I just the, really hope that Eric's kids weren't outside watching. Actually, one least, is, least yeah, two of them. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah, one, one of them was outside. They will forever like, remember Uncle Marcus <laughs> as was like, Yo. the brother that got a shot blocked by his wife. <laughs> yeah. And so, had her see, score now, afterwards. And you held the pose too. You you did love the I was like, Ooh. yeah. And after that, we went inside. It was all nets like COVID. So that means that was game over. That means you're uh, gonna have to go back over there and have a rematch. And I do not have the little man syndrome at all. You just say, maybe just a bit. Hey, 
Bro, nah. You said it with your chest. I'm gonna leave. He it. don't. I'm gonna leave it right there on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you said it with your chest. He you said it with he your doesn't. chest. <laughs> so you know, you mentioned Eric, and I, I immediately think of songwriting, being the prolific mm -hmm. songwriter he is. But as it pertains to the Baylor Project, which which one of you is bringing the ideas to the table for a song, uh, and then also being the the lyricist as well? It's all me. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> okay, go ahead and answer, babe. Now for the truth. <laughs> the truth and the lie. Now, it, it is both of us. We both, um, that's an area where we're both very creative and we just kind of bring our ideas to the table. So it'll happen all different kinds of ways. <clears throat> for example, there's some songs where I'm just, start at the piano and then there's some songs where Marx will say I want to write a song like x y and z about such and such and such hmm. okay let me kind of you know mull over that or just be open to it and then the idea will come some songs he may start on the drums and be like I have a feel like this and I want to do something kind of like in this world and I'll take that and I'll say okay what do I hear over that and then I'll write whatever it is that I respond to that. And then I'll take, hey, what do you think about this? So um, it's it happens all different kinds of ways. So we both will start the process of songs. Um, it could be something where I'm driving to the post office and mm -hmm. something just kind of comes out. I put it in a memo and save it till later. Or <clears throat> um, so it happens like all different kinds of ways. Um, and that's how it happened with um both the journey and generations generations we did way more original songs mm -hmm. than the journey which was cool um and uh i th so the concept of the album actually came at a friend's house we were at um our former manager's house and her husband and another couple and they're in the generation ahead of us two generations mm -hmm. ahead of us and we were just sitting around the table eating breakfast and homemade biscuits Mm -hmm. yes. and <laughs> it's so good too and um they were telling us funny stories about when they were kids and the different things that they lived with and we no longer live with like the ice man the ice box for your oh, freezer yeah. instead the of you man. know yeah. right mm -hmm. and it's like i remember the book man but i mean had no ice box and he had a meter man for the refrigerator that mm -hmm. you had to keep putting quarters in and i had never heard of a meter man for a refrigerator and we were just cracking up at all this stuff and and that's when the idea came the concept came i was like oh babe i got the idea for it hmm. the album generations he was like okay whatever that means that's fine and then <laughs> and song by song by song the picture started being created like and being becoming clear as we would go on so we would just in that, it's an interesting thing when we enter into that space, because I remember coming out of the journey and touring and doing all that for a couple of years, about three years or so. Um, and I remember Marcus said, well, you know, I think it's time that we, um, and you, you've you locked up the studio, the, it, the studio's in disarray, you got old chords all over the place. And he says, I think it's time for us to, you know, start thinking about working on the next project. I'm like, okay. And I just opened myself up to that. Mm -hmm. And then, so as we're going through our days, ideas come and it, like we have a whole phone full of memos of him singing ideas, me singing ideas, him completing the idea, me completing the idea, him saying, oh, let's rework this or okay, I like that, but we need to add another section here, maybe something like this. And so it's, it's just a whole potpourri of creativity when we're in that zone. So yeah, so let's let's continue then to talk about generations and you know it's this uh what it's been called a soulful uh sonic quilt story. If if you will elaborate on that first and foremost. Yes. So um yes, our friend Andre Stone, chemo guest, he he um, is a writer and he's worked in the industry with artist management and also on the corporate side of Jazz at Lincoln Center and other um, organizations. And um, <clears throat> he wrote the liner notes and it just, we so loved how he explained um, what the album meant to him. Hmm. And that's how he came up with the soulful sonic story quilt. And he kind of um, highlighted the analogy between 
quilt making in the African American community throughout the generations mm -hmm. and the different parts of it and um, how it kind of corresponded to different parts of the album. And so um, the album itself is really, it's, it's, it's like a cultural anthology of life, love, faith, family, community. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much steeped in the black culture and the black experience mm -hmm. in America. Um, not just America, but definitely primarily in America. Um, <clears throat> and it speaks to different generations, different eras in music and sound. Um, there's so many musical influences on the record. And we just wanted to kind of tell our story um, and highlight those everyday lived experiences. So even though it's told through the, the lens of the Black experience, the concepts, they're everyday concepts that every culture, every people group, everybody goes through. And you're talking about family. Um, what's the song? A love is a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's like, you know, that's like family reunion kind of, you know, vow renewal, wedding. Uh, somebody at uh, Marcus's home church in St. Louis uh, got married a couple weeks ago and played that song once they were done their vows and everybody was exiting the church and like oh my gosh that's yes that's it that's it that's it nice. um you know even the intro to that song the love story we wanted to um not just hear from us but other people's versions of love and marriage I and relationships that very much as well hearing all of those different stories oh, yeah. thank you we had both of our moms in there yeah. both of our mothers and um one of my uncles and aunts um our friends avery and dana <laughs> and people just sitting at the kitchen table talking about it and marcus you got the care because he always has his phone he'd be like eric oh, was in there right too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i love you know you marcus is asking your mother uh you know, did she know when she's like, I knew from the way you looked at him. <laughs> I mean, you look at her. <laughs> that's I knew. A, see, that's the real story. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That's the real I story. I knew from the, the way truth. you looked at my daughter. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. See, the album tells the truth. Eric it, saw it. it. He's like, I, I saw truth. you fall in love. <laughs> that's right, man. But listen, album number two, you know, and, and that can be daunting for some yeah. folks, right? Um, and I don't want to say that maybe it was easier for you because, you know, you've had second albums and other iterations, right? Uh, so it, it wasn't necessarily the sophomore blues, if you will, but I know it, it still was a task to kind of meet and or go above uh, Journey, being that it was Grammy nominated, you know, two times. And for best jazz vocal album, which is no small feat at all, right? Yeah. So yeah. con congratulations to you on that as well. But uh, but hats off to you in, in coming out strong with this project. It's, oh. it's jazz, it's R&B, it's gospel. And at the end of the day, it is good music, which mm. I just so appreciate. And then when you look at the, the level of artistry on here, Diane Reeves, uh, <sighs> Jasmia Horn, Kenny Garrett, you know. Now, Marcus, you being able to turn around and bring Kenny on when he had you on years ago, you know, so it's kind of like reaching back, right? Uh, Jeffrey Keezer, Ben Williams, Jamison Ross. I mean, the, the next generation is on here as well. And then my good frat brother as well, Darren Adwater on here. Come on, somebody. Yes! yes. One Woo! of the great conductors yes. and and uh, and composers out there. Big shout to him and and Soulful Symphony and what they brought yeah. over the years. But yeah. there are just so many incredible songs on here. And and let me say, <laughs> I, I have I have two favorites on here that I, I have to talk about. <clears throat> First of which, and and I love that you know there's so much original music on here, right? Uh, because I get so tired. And don't take this the wrong way. I understand. <laughs> it, it doesn't pertain to you, but vocalists come a dime a dozen, mm. right? Yeah. As a music director, you know, you receive four to five vocalists a week. 
You're hearing the same thing over and over again. Singing the standards over and over again. And that, for me, I don't want to hear a standard. I'm not going to play a standard unless that person has elevated the standard to it. They brought something new to the table, right? Mm -hmm. They've accentuated the positive within that standard. Yes. You're not going to do it better than Ella did it. You better preach that sermon. Or Sarah. <clears throat> you know, you can't outdo them, right? But you can still elevate a song through your artistry, right? But if you aren't doing that, sit your on the couch. I almost said it. <laughs> sit I, I almost on said it. <laughs> yes. But you know, so for me, there there are a couple of tunes in here that just stand out for me. Love makes me sing. Mm. Lord have mercy. You know, first off, it it has, for me, it has a, a kind of a Poinciana vibe to it, right? You got it. Ahmad Jamal, I'm, I'm just it. hearing that, right? I'm hearing yeah. that. And and then the, sh the strings come in, and I love strings because they bring so much drama to us. Yes. Song, right? <laughs> Yeah. And and then you you top it off with uh with the great Keith Loftus doing work on on soprano saxophone and it, it just I'm just flying on a cloud. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh my gosh. Man. I love it. Thank where where you. did this song come from? Wow. Well so, we definitely had a fuss about that one too. Didn't so we? this gonna be <laughs> so you want to talk about Jean catalog, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm watching just to get a break. I'm watching this teenage, this teenage, uh, teenage series on Netflix, and this song comes on, and I'm saying, "Oh, hey, Mr. DJ is in his Netflix series." I'm like, "It's bouncing," and I'm grooving, but I'm like, "No, it's not Gene and Renee." Mm -hmm. So I'm like, "Who is this?" I'm like, oh man, it's the composer that Gene was talking about, Michael Wyckoff. He's the original writer that Gene sampled the song Hey Mr. DJ from. The original uh, okay. song is called Looking to You. Looking up and to you. Looking up to you. So <clears throat> I'm hearing this guy sing. I'm like, this guy got a vibe. And so I I no, so this one ended up happening. It it made me research his music. So I started going through his catalog. If y'all don't know who Michael Wyckoff is, he was signed to a major. He was around the time of like Donnie Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, probably he worked on some Stevie Wonder records. I think he's around like the early eighties. Okay. When you talk about this brother got so much soul, he grew up in the church, he plays keys and sings and writes. So I got to digging through his music and I got to this last track, which was called Love Makes Me Sing. And I couldn't stop listening to it. Wow. And I started hearing, I said, man, can you imagine if we flip this with a Porciani groove? You you mm -hmm. totally nailed it. You nailed it. And I could imagine this really having a vibe. And so I played it for Jean and she was like, hey, we're done with the album. We're we're finished. I was tired. The next studio session we went in. <laughs> well, the next day she couldn't stop singing it. Wow. So next thing you know, it was time for, um, you know, we had to record it. And, you know, a great legacy uh, of a great artist, composer, writer, and arranger, Michael yeah. Wyckoff. Please check out his records if you get a chance. Please. That's incredible, it's man. So soul. That yeah. that is incredible. And yeah. as I mentioned, you know, talking about elevating uh, standard, you all took one of the great pieces from saxophonist and NEA jazz master Wayne Shorter and just created a, a piece of beauty. Like mm -hmm. I played it on a cool jazz countdown a couple of weeks ago. And as I'm producing the show, I'm sitting in my studio and I'm working and I'm playing it. And I just sit there and I close my eyes. And the song is just so beautiful. I I get emotional with music, right? Yeah. Like I have I have an emotional relationship with music to the point where like I, I got teary-eyed. And I'm just not saying that because you're sitting in front of me mm. right now. I literally got teary eyed, you know, this, this great Wayne Shorter tune, you know, you, you added lyrics to it and we've all heard a standard that somebody's had lyrics to and you're like, 
why did you do that? You know? <laughs> like it, it just don't fit. But damn, woman, you. <laughs> what I felt inside, you know. <laughs> mm, mm. Mm, mm. Yeah, wow. and you came into my life, and then I think you got Freddie Hendrix on there playing trumpet, playing that muted trumpet, and. I, I oh. threw I threw a bottle at the speakers <laughs> in that moment. Wow. Seriously, it was a plastic bottle. It was it was a plastic bottle. <laughs> it was, but you know, I mean, listen, Thank what you. what love I felt inside when you came into my life. Mm. Mm. Let me tell you something, man. No I'm gonna have to get you to. Do you play an Play a mean ham bone, brother. Let me tell you. Because I'm like, if we can get you on one of these instruments, because you tone I'm in, telling you, because he 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 zones Ooh. into sound, the right? Of a lyric, so you could you imagine in him accompanying somebody, like it, you would just be unbelievable. So we need you to sing. Wow. And as an instrument, we'll figure that oh, out. Oh yeah, because he well, was you know, just, would just be Let me friend. talk, man. Let me let me be on album number three. We do an interlude. Yes. We'll, we will do an interlude. This is a cool jazz conversations exclusive. Man. I'm gonna do an interlude on the next album, and it's gonna man, be because you got beautiful conversation. Man, because you mm. you you get it. Like we've been longing, and I'll say this: like we we did some some great interviews, which has been amazing. But it's always longing for being able to talk with somebody that really digs into the music, not just dig into it, but really understand where you're coming from. And it's more so not just understanding where we're coming from. You it's you totally get it. You actually you're living out the liner notes by the way you're speaking about it. So it's just like there is no more, you know, we've been going around thinking about trying to make get an EPK or some kind of video that we want to do just to explain the album to somebody. But this is it. You talking about it, this is what this is what generations is. You got wow. Thank you, brother. I mean, listen, this everything I'm saying has come from you all, you know, from your love, from your marriage, from your growth, from your experience, right? And that's what the listener gets to experience, you know, when they when they hit play, you know, this beautiful sonic soulful quilt is laid upon them. Mm. As all of these songs are played and instruments are taking their heights and their senses to new levels, man. It is a beautiful marriage of sound, of lyric, and of love. That's what wow. Generations is for me. So I'm, mm. I'm a fan for life. You said that. <laughs> I am a fan for life. Ooh, yes. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm just so gracious that, you know, and, and happy that you all took some time to to spend with me today. You know, I haven't seen you since, what, the cruise? Uh, yes. Years ago now, right? With, with Avery. That's yes, right. Yeah. That's right. We had a great conversation there. Yeah. On, uh, I think it was love and business. I think it was. Yes. So marriage yes. and business. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so so glad to be in your presence once again. This for everybody out there listening. This is an incredible album. You have got to check it out for yourself. Album number two from the Baylor Project. It is on their own recording label. Be a light. Very important, right? Very important. So support them and all that they do. I want you all to follow them on all social media outlets, including Christian Mingle, Black Planet. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. So. What, Black what, Planet Christian what, what are your uh, <laughs> what's your social media? Everywhere. <laughs> on Instagram, we're the Bella Project. On Facebook, the Bella Project. And then on Twitter, it's just Bela Project. And our website is thebelaproject.com. And, and if, if anybody wants any autograph cds just go on to the website and we got you covered it's the distribution of those cds of the autograph is literally happening out of our studio so our hands have touched almost every you know what now I think about it our hand has almost touched every cd wow for the most part or if not the cd itself it definitely touched the box okay. that the cd came in uh, but we're, you... we're humbled i mean just with how we've been blessed throughout our careers and, and, and just the things that are happening. We're really honored and it's happening because of P 
people like yourself and you all that are listening and you all that are supporting us because I'll say this that as you're in on this journey and you grow in your business and you pursuing your goals and your dreams you know it's not always easy each day and just being and being able to just be a part of having an interview like this and talking to you all is just you know gives us strength to keep going to keep pushing and we all in this together especially during this time most definitely man it is it is all love so and let me congratulate you because right now you all sit at number two on the jazz week charts and we're gonna do all we can to get y'all to number one because boy oh boy how great that will be and i see it i'm a negro donis <laughs> yes i don't have my hat on right now but i'm a negro donis i can see you <laughs> to the future so the bass man said that it is coming to you, so receive it right now generations yeah. the latest album of marcus and gene bell of the baylor project Thank you all so much again for hanging out here. Thank on cool you. Jazz conversations. Thank you for your thank support. You so thank for you for having us. Yes, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you on another Capital Jazz crew. Most hey, hey. got to add this though, Gene. You don't follow his, you got to follow his IG because I'm going to tell you this now. That brother can get on that grill. Yes, yes. That bro, let me tell you, when he cooks, there's a process. It's like music. Oh. Yeah. Things have to marinate and stuff. It's crafted. Yes. He got the hat yes. and, and with mm -hmm. his voice, and and then he makes it even <laughs> work because he 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 had share a clip. He like ooh, and you know how his voice deep it is, <laughs> and you just your mouth is just water, and he could throw some fish on there for you, babe. He does everything. Oh yeah, fish, oh, chicken. No, no, he no. When I everything. say do it. So the Let real question something. is, when we coming over? Yes, yeah, that's we, the real we question. Let you come on, sit down on the couch, yeah. Right down yes. turnpike. Yes. Yeah. Ain't nothing but this thing. is the last thing, and he's Five just as competitive. And Gene, he's like me and our brothers. He's just as competitive as he with his kids. Because I saw him, Gene, oh. gotta go. He will <laughs> wrestle his son. Oh, they wait. wrestling. It, oh, no, not outside. In the house. Yeah. Wait, how? To let them know that I can wrestle oh, you they, down. They grown now. They're oh, they grown. Oh, you really put it on, man. But that was only two years ago. That was. <laughs> He's like, right, right. Years. Don't try to make it like, oh man, yeah. I did that like a long time ago. No, that was like two years no, ago. Sometimes you gotta let them, them little Nick Rose know. Okay, I still got it. <laughs> It's still my house, you know what I'm saying? So if I gotta put like you in the headlock, I'm a yeah, I'm, I'm sound a like that. his brothers, I'm all his older that. brothers. Yeah, Larry's. you gotta love it, man. Oh my gosh, yes. But wow, <laughs> it is funny how time flies when you're having fun. But that yeah. is going to do it for this edition of Cool Jazz Conversations. Uh, this is a production of TVM Productions and is broadcast from its home of WSSB 90.3 at South Carolina State University. You can catch the podcast of this program on all streaming platforms, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Player FM, Google Play, uh, Google Podcasts, tell Alexa, Alexa, play Cool Jazz Conversation, she'll do it for you. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Cool Jazz Conversations, and we will see you next time right here on Cool Jazz Conversations. Peace. Magic of our past. Daddy screams and mama screams with the buttermilk on bread. You better ease your grace and eat it all, that's what she said. Do you remember Sunday morning chat with the press and curl? Rub it so